Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Easy Power Tuesday Refresher webinar series. My name is Jim Chastain. I'm an applications engineer here with Easy Power. And as we have uh, developed this series of presentations, we've uh, managed to come up with some topics that aren't that well advertised or described in some of our training sessions. And so we try to do a little bit deeper dive into smaller topics, not necessarily having an exhaustive uh, explanation, but make sure we try to cover any questions that uh, survive after <laughs> we do the presentation. So again, welcome all. Today we're talking about the uh, Scenario Manager. Uh, it's a feature in the Easy Power Tools that permits one file to store different switching configurations, contingency conditions, what if modifications, and then be used uh, to analyze in power flow, short circuit, or harmonics. So it ends up being a very uh, useful feature. And frequently, like I say, we don't get into depth in talking about this uh, that often. And so hopefully we'll be able to stimulate some conversations. As usual, we'd like to start with some poll questions. And the first question is, do you use the Easy Power Auto Save? And if so, what settings do you use? So if you would please participate by providing some feedback. Obviously, I have a fat finger problem typing in the word use. But we do appreciate your feedback and uh, participation in this survey. There's no right or wrong answer, just making sure that, for one, people are aware of uh, what the capability is, and two, make sure you're not misusing it such that it hampers your use of the Easy Power tools as a whole. So let's leave this open about another 10 seconds. Looks like we're close to a quorum. All right, thank you. And here's how folks have weighed in on this one. Good, good to know. All right, and then regarding the scenario manager, if you use it, how, what uh, quantity or what's your typical number of scenarios in a project? And again, there may be people that are already using it and hopefully we can help improve that utilization. And for those that you are not using it, hopefully we'll be able to expand your horizons. And, uh, and for those attending today, we do provide a, a certificate of attendance for how much time you've uh, attended the presentation. And frequently people use that for supporting extended education credits. Okay, so here's how uh, folks have closed in on her uh, replied on this one. That pretty much matches, I think, my experience. And then finally, have you ever used or re needed to use the backup files or the backup file feature in Easy Power? And this all has to do with, uh, it's the, frankly, the utilization of Scenario Manager and covering your your work if for some reason something goes wrong. So let's leave this open for about another 10 seconds. We're close to a quorum. Do appreciate your feedback and your participation. And here's how people have weighed in on this one. So it looks like we're covering some fresh ground, if in fact that's useful. Good, thank you for participating. Okay, so as I mentioned today, we're going to be diving a little bit into the scenario manager. And what we're going to be covering is how to create new scenarios, how to develop reports or utilize the information that's saved in the scenario manager, and then uh, ways to amplify the, uh, the, the utilization is being able to update it as keeping status on the overall system without having to change each of the scenarios. Now, in the user's guide, in this case, it's an excerpt from page 284, 
there's a discussion about the automatic backups. And I encourage you, if you uh, have had need to recreate a one line because it didn't save or you overwrote something, uh, I encourage you to kind of have a look at this. It describes the utilization of backup files that are created in two different places. And if you look at the, uh, the file explorer under my documents, Easy Power 10.5, here's the list of folders that exist. And one line backups are created in both the one line backup file and the one lines file. And so it's worthy of note to uh, understand these because it's going to be a backstop if something goes wrong uh, in your computer. Just an FYI. Now, we're jumping back into Scenario Manager, how it's done is the first time a file is generated. It's identified when it's saved, it's identified as the base case. And from then on, when you want to create a scenario, <clears throat> by using Scenario Manager, it's creating a macro that identifies what the differences are between the scenario that you're looking at and the base case itself. And so it, at this point, it's important to notice that or make a observation that developing a procedure that you follow is the best way to prevent contamination uh, of your scenario manager organization. So these are my recommendations. And one is always start with the base case. And uh, like I say, the project needs to be saved at least once. And then at the same time, autosave will not start until the file is saved at least once. Then when we want to create a new scenario, stipulate that command, create new scenario first, make the desired modifications in at that point, and save the scenario with the unique name, and then go back to the base case. So it, you always want to start with the base case. You don't want to make changes in the base case, and that's where you can run into a, a lot of headaches if you make changes either in the wrong scenario or in the base case itself meaning to have saved that or generated a new scenario. So as I go through a couple of these examples, you're going to see kind of some of these ramifications. So things to think about is to avoid making changes in the base case that you don't intend to apply to all scenarios. And for sure, don't make changes in the wrong scenario uh, because it's something that's you're going to have to start afresh if you uh, if you do so. As I kind of alluded to it, you may not want to autosave while you're creating scenarios because this will be, again, saving work that may or may not be finalized at the time you're doing it. And then at the as the final notice, when changes are made that need to be applied to all scenarios, make those changes in the base case. Now with that, I don't know if you've noticed in the Easy Power Tools or not, but basically very minor changes in Pan and Zoom are recognized as quote unquote changes. And so it'll ask if you want to save changes when that's all you've done. And we'll try to point that out. So it's important to kind of keep track of what you're changing and what you're not changing, especially when you're working with Scenario Manager. So what I'm going to do is create a couple scenarios. The first thing I want to do is compare the results on an existing one line with two different uh, the application of two different standards both the 18 uh, the 2002 version of 1584 and see how that compares with the same file utilizing the changes recommended in the 2018 version of 1584 and then we're going to create a comparison report for the instant energy we're going to make a change in that uh, at, we're going to add a large motor and then show the comparison of both the effect of instant energy and equipment duty on that scenario. And then we'll go ahead and create a report showing the, how it identifies the changes between any particular scenario and a base case. So with that said, let me jump back into Easy Power and uh, let's get going. So as I mentioned first, if I 
create a new one line diagram and it doesn't have to be all that exotic to be able to prove the point the, the tool has identified this file uh, here at the top is easy power one line and if i go to close this it's going to ask me if i want to save and if i do then i'm going to assign a new name in this case i'm going to call it just something that i can recognize and now when i go back and open that up you can see that it identifies that particular file now as the base case now i'm going to take an older existing file and uh, do a comparison between the settings for a 1584 2002 version and the uh, 2018 version first of all when i open the one line like this i'm going to look at my options to see what my autosave is set up for so i'm going to right click go to options and here on the general uh, tab i've got an automatic save set up for every 10 minutes so i'm going to go ahead and disable that while i'm working on the scenario manager and while I'm there, I may want to keep an eye on how frequently I update or check for check for updates. Now, when I go into Scenario Manager, if I've created any uh, previous scenarios, you'll see it first asks me if I want to do any changes. Well, the only changes I've made is that save to the uh, my update. So let's go ahead and save that. And I can see under my open scenarios, I don't have any created. So I'm going to cancel this and go back to my new scene. So now I'm still in the base case. First thing I want to do to create a new scenario is select a new scenario. It identifies me now as being in scenario one. And I want to see what the uh, settings for short circuit and with the new updates in um, 10.5, I can do this from the database options to see how the short circuit settings are, are set up. And I see here under my Arc Flash Hazard tab, I'm utilizing IEEE 1584-2002. I'm including the main, I'm using momentary current. So I want to save this as my scenario. So I'm going to go back and store scenario as IEEE 2002. Now, once I've saved that, I'm going to go back to my base case. Now, there's nothing obviously changed in the in the part except for my settings. So I'm now going to Scenario Manager, start a new scenario. Go to my settings, short circuit set up now at this time i want to make sure i'm using 2018 version i want to exclude the main i want to use integrated method now i'm going to apply these and go back and save this scenario store scenario as IEEE 2018. Now I'll go back to the base case. Now from here, I want to do a comparison between those two files or those two scenarios. So I'm going to create under Scenario Manager, create a comparison report for ArcFlash. And it's asking me if I want to change scenarios. Now again, the change is my settings. So if I don't want to save them, I'll stay in the 2002 version. If I do want to save them, it's going to return it to the one line. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I'm looking at comparing the scenarios. What I want to do is create, I've done this before, but let's go ahead and do a second one. Use the green settings wheel. I want to add a new comparison. And I'm going to call this IEEE compare. Yeah. 
I can spell. And then I want to put those two uh, scenarios in the selected scenario list and then save the changes. Now I'm going to look at that report. I'm going to create it using the default layout. And what it's going to show me, <laughs> what it's going to show me is uh, the check mark for the worst case. And we can see here the advantage you're using this particular file is that some I have a worst case with the 2002 and some the worst case is 2018, which is which is expected as far as not everything is going to be one side or the other. Now this display allows me to look at the worst scenario by clicking on the icon in the second left and then it shows here the listing of the worst case scenario that I may want to put on my label if I print from this particular plot. Now Chuck's saying can you name the base case in the same time and have the base case stay as a scenario? Um, the answer is yes, but you don't want to get into that. It's, a, it's an advanced feature where you can make the current scenario the base case, but there's some ramifications to that that may not be, in other words, I'd play with it if that's what you plan to do on a small one line before you start renaming the base case. Okay, so now at this point, I've, I've uh, now I can also create, just because I'm here, under my scenario manager, I can create a comparison with the equipment duty. Now that's not going to be affected by the short circuit settings, and so I'm going to use a, uh, a different file to do that. Well, just to Chuck's question, I have the ability to use advanced, and if I've made changes to the to some scenario, I can store that scenario as the base case. But again, there's ramifications there on a complex system that you, where you have a bunch of scenarios, we have to be careful what that means. Because if you've deleted uh, devices, it's going to come back and bite you. Okay, so I'm going to close out this scenario, this uh, file, and open up a more complex one line. I write protect my file so I don't uh, foul things up when I'm doing demos. And um, I, I try to make sure that uh, the current examples that I'm using are 10.5. But in this case, I'm opening up one and it's, it's both an older file and it's uh, write protected. Okay, so I'm going to look at scenarios that exist with open scenario. And I can see I have a bunch of them here. Now, the question becomes, what do each of these represent? So if I pick out, I'm going to move this so I can see my one line. If I pick out utility only tie closed and open it, the tool will color code the changes for each element that's different from the base case. So here I see I have my uh, utility connection severed or open through the, the utility transformer. So I've isolated transformer sub A, but I'm operating not on the cogen, just on the utility because this high voltage breaker is open and this tie breaker is closed. So I'm feeding through transformer sub B to both halves of my system. Now, if I want to see that same information in the tabular form, I can go to Open Scenario. I don't want to store it. I can pick out that same scenario or others and look at a report. And this will show me what has been changed or what is different on this particular scenario, different from the base case. And so again, it's not a bad idea to keep track of this, especially if you have a large number of scenarios. Now, the uh, the other thing that's more, uh, I'm going to go back to the base case and not save anything. The thing that's uh, a little bit more obvious now in such 
a configuration is the potential for exceeding equipment duty ratings because I have multiple sources of uh, current. And so under my scenario manager, I can create comparison report for equipment duty. And again, I want to discard changes because I haven't changed anything except for the zoom. I'm going to use all scenarios in this case to do a worst case for equipment duty. And what we're looking for are breakers or protective devices that are exceeding compliance. And so it's showing me in each case what that bus uh, status is as far as its worst case. And what I'm look what it's looking at is whether or not we're exceeding the threshold that we've set in uh, the equipment, the short circuit setup. And I don't see any that's exceed exceeding that. They won't be marked red. And I can show the total worst case and be able to export this to Excel. Obviously, this is a valuable document for any facility to know what their weak points are, what their weakest link is when we're doing uh, a short circuit analysis. Now, the thing that, that jumps out at me, and again, this was kind of a exercise in, uh, in what if, and the question, if I look at these different scenarios, I really don't have a scenario that compares both sources to be online with both transformers. And so I'm going to create another um, scenario. So let's go back to the base case, create a new scenario. And the change from the base case is going to be just close the tiebreaker with both. Now, this is not obviously not something you find in everyday use, or it would be even recommended. But I'm going to close this particular uh, breaker while I have both sources of uh, current online. And we're going to save this as don't let this happen. <laughs> so, uh, so it's a exercise just to see if I would exceed any. Uh, so I want to store this as tie open, tie closed. with both transformers and the circuit. So this I would expect to be the worst case situation. Go back to the base case. And now again, my concern is equipment duty. So I'm gonna look at equipment duty report. And let's go ahead and save the changes. Don't worry about it then. Trying to save it to an existing right protected. Okay, so let's look at the report. All right, so what again, what I'm looking for is any over duty device. And so if I make that selection, sure enough, it's showing me the buses that have over dutied. And these are showing positive uh, current, a positive over, over due doing. If I looked at my worst case, it's going to be in the tie, both closed. And in particular, the, uh, the main bus breakers. So it made a couple points. One, that it, it found what I expected it to find. And two, it's not a normal operation, but I would want to make sure that those are labeled not to be uh, closed, the tie closed when both sources are online. No, so so the question from Victor, is it generally advisable not to include? Uh, no, in fact, I would expect to include the base case in a scenario comparison. I just excluded it when I was doing the two standards because one of the standards was a duplicate of the uh, of the base case. 
Jim is asking me to explain to synchronize the base case with the toggle. Um, there's there's an option to synchronize the graphics with the. Let me kind of close this. And to tell you the truth, I've never done that. And what we're talking about is. Let's just reopen one line. And synchronize graphics with the base case. Um, and frankly, I've not had to do that. I've not had to explain that well to me. I need to respond via email on recommendations to use or not use that particular function. But yes, that's that's a question that we should be addressing. Okay, sorry if I couldn't handle that one, but I will follow up via email. Any other questions? I think we're ready to move on. Thank you for attending today. Uh, by all means, uh, if you're not receiving the newsletter, make sure you've contacted sales at easypower.com and request it because that's where the most uh, current information available on uh, new webinars and new training is uh, published. Hope everyone has a good day and we'll talk to you later.